And the first thing you have to do is get the baking pan ready. And this is just a nine and a half by 13 inch by two inch deep baking pan. And here I've got a little trick for you. You see what I've done? I've lined the pan with foil because I know that all of you have made brownies in the past and try to get the first piece out without it looking terrible and you can't do it. But if you line the pan, then when you go to take the baked good out of the oven, you'll be able to lift this whole thing up and cut nice even slices. Isn't that great to know? So the first thing we want to do is butter the pan well. So get your pan all ready and then just set that aside. And no worries now because we know that everything is going to come out beautifully. And to start this, we want to begin with some cornmeal. So this is cornmeal and you can buy this in your grocery store. You can either get a fine grind of cornmeal or you can get a stone ground variety, which is even better. So two cups of cornmeal goes into a heavy duty saucepan and two cups of flour. And you want to mix that up well so that's all combined. And then we want to add a little bit of salt, about a half a teaspoon of salt goes in, and two teaspoons of baking powder, because after all, this is a cake, so we need a little leavening power here. And once that's all mixed together, the process is very much like making polenta, which is nothing more than cornmeal cooked in water. And for this, you want five cups of water, cold water. So get the water in slowly, mixing all the ingredients as you go. So once it's in the pot, get all the lumps out as well as you can before you put the heat on this. And then get it going. And now you've got to stay right by it because this is going to thicken up. You want this to thicken if you've ever made polenta, you know that it has to be a fairly thick mixture. So you can either use a wooden spoon to do this or you could use a whisk, but you have to stay with it. And it should thicken in about, oh, five to eight minutes. So I'm going to get it going and use my other long extension arm to tell you about some of the other things that are in this. Now today it has all these other exotic ingredients. And here are some raisins. And with the raisins, we've put a little bit of grappa. This is something else that comes from different parts of Italy and in the Veneto. And it's really a a distilled liqueur that's made from the skins and the pits of grapes. And it has a very high uh, proof, so it, you only need a little bit of it. P the Venetians and other Italians drink that after dinner as a little kind of digestivo. So we want to marinate those raisins in the grappa. It's better if you do this early in the day. If you don't want to use grappa, you could just use water. That would be perfectly fine, but you want to plump up these raisins. I love figs. This is how they come from the store. And you have to take off the stem, you see, because you really don't want to eat that. And then just cut them up. They're very easy to dice up. And actually, figs have a very high concentration of sugar. And they're wonderful in this particular recipe. So there are our figs, and we'll be putting that in later. And then we want some citron. Now, you've heard me talk about citron before. This is actually a member of the lemon family, and the Italians use this in a lot of different cakes and pastries and breads, and it's wonderful in the pinza. And then we want to put in some pears and apples. And here we're using just one apple that we've already diced up and a pear that we have ready to go. And we also want to have some nuts. And here are just walnuts. And all you want to do is give them a coarse chop. i got to keep an eye on this now as I'm going along. Give the nuts a, a coarse chop, and they will go in with the rest of our fruit. Now, let's see how that pinza mixture is doing. And it has thickened up. You see how thick it is. And now we have to add in the sugar, which is right here. Get the sugar in. Now this, is, this is where you really need arm action. Get the sugar in, which was a cup of sugar, and six tablespoons of 
softened butter. It's better if the butter is soft because then you're not going to have to work so hard to get it in there. And that kind of loosens it up a little bit. And that's all there is to it before we add the fruits. So once all that butter is melted, then bring the mixture over to where you're working. And now we can put these other things in. So if you have done the raisins with the grappa, then put everything in, because we don't want to lose that flavor of the grappa. If you were using water with the uh, raisins to plump them up, then drain the water off. So the raisins go in, now the citron. And if you didn't want to use citron, you could use lemon or candied orange peel. That would be nice in this as well. And now the figs go in, and the apples go in, the pears. Make sure you're using good fruits for this. And the last thing to go in are the walnuts. You don't have walnuts, use something else. You could use pine nuts. You could use hazelnuts. You could use almonds if you want to. So make sure all those fruits are really well incorporated. Now, we get that pan that we've prepared, and here's mine, and you gotta get this in. So spread it in, and now you wanna bake this for about, oh, 35 to 45 minutes, and into the oven it goes, it's a hefty one, on the bottom rack. And you can forget about that now for about 35 or 40 minutes. Feast your eyes on that. Isn't that gorgeous? Now here is that trick. All you have to do is lift it out. No pan to clean. Is life grand or what? Put that aside. And then you can do some nifty things with this. You can just cut it up into squares if you want to. You know, you can just cut a piece like this. And you see how thick this is. So you can cut just a piece like that. How boring. Or you could do this, which I think is so much more fun. Get yourself some cookie cutters. And when I'm having a party, I love to do this because Look what you can do. Isn't that cute?